Hello. Um, I always close my eyes when, whenever someone reads my CV. It's so cringing. Um, <laughs> and you realize, God, you shouldn't have put that. Um, and, and I just do the consulting to pay my bills. So please, don't go too much into it. Um, <laughs> So I, was, uh, so I should say I'm a dedicated PhD student, so don't think that I'm actually fooling around. <laughs> um, um, I, since I've worked extensively um, in the area of media and communications concerning with research policy and practice, and now thrown by a midlife crisis back to academia and pursuing my PhD, um, I, I'm basically concerned with media practices. Um, I think it's particularly, it's very important whenever we talk about the internet, uh, not as it is a technology that's come from nowhere with no, you know, people tend to kind of place it in a manner they've always wished to. But it's good to know it's actually, you know, within the traditions of media studies, um, it's often recognized as a type of media. Therefore, <clears throat> make no surprises. There's no, uh, you know, there's no surprise at all. It comes with its own, uh, it kind of carries its own baggages from traditional media with its own plan, you know, fantasies and, um, um, uh, you know, expectations, and it lets you down. So it, 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 does, it does carry lots of uh, 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 traditional media back packages. But I'm more concerned with everyday practices uh, when we talk about social justice in the internet media world. And I'm concerned, I, I, I use the term, I, you might hear a lot of time the word practice in my, in my little talk. Uh, so they, they, therefore, it's best, best to kind of uh, uh, define what I mean by that. Um, basically, it's, a, I mean, it's increasingly considered to be an, um, an approach in, within the traditions of media studies that it is a social theory centered on practices rather than structures, systems, individuals, or interactions. On the other hand, it's fundamentally about what people actually do. So you don't actually go with lots of conceptual perception, you know, like lots of uh, philosophy and ideas, but you simply go there and observe what they do and why do they do that. And why do they do that? Um, and, and then you take it back and you, know, you understand their social backgrounds and context. And that, that way you open up the their, 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 their everyday practices and try and understand how that works, in which the internet might be one type of media. So in my field work as well, um, when I'm looking at um, what they do in everyday practices, they might use more mobile phones, don't use internet at all, uh, or one day they might use more internet. So what actually makes them do it? And what does that mean? How do they articulate those practices in everyday lives? And within, in, I'm trying to locate this whole social justice phenomenon within that practice. So in my little talk, um, um, so that I just have to mention, therefore, to discuss this broader social justice in the internet-mediated world. It, in my view, is once again, to, you know, we will end up recognizing the technological structure and determinism, but, but rather a dialogue on social justice in one or more internet-mediated worlds. I'll say why that, one or more. Um, it, it's probably a modest acceptance of complexities surrounded in everyday practices. I say this, uh, perhaps that kind of explains why some of us don't actually pay attention to what's happening in the Latin American internet-mediated world. So we all, have, uh, we all have our own little internet-mediated world. So let's not even actually begin by the assumption that there's one internet-mediated world. <clears throat> so the question is, what is your internet-mediated world? Um, I mean, in, in, during my college days, we have this very um, funny question, is my Foucault the same as yours? So in the same way, um, is my internet-mediated world the same as yours? So that should be a starting point. And we, if we don't know that, and I don't think we'll be in a position to actually even discuss what actually um, concerns all of us uh, in the name of social justice. So we are talking about, so therefore, <laughs> Um, this, and, and then I understand from the program format that we're all here to um, articulate a discourse through a manifesto. That's a lot of big words. So how do we ensure we do that? If you, uh, in order to make sure we do that, we have to make sure we first start asking question, are we all in the same planet? Are we all in the same internet mediated world? Because, um, <clears throat> you know, the history of thought, knowledge, and philosophy you know, I'm quoting Foucault again here. Um, they, they, they all seem to be seeking and discovering and more and more discontinuities. But for the sake of practicalities, the history also itself appears to be abandoning 
the interruption of events in favor of stable structures. So we may actually here spend two, three days and actually say that's too far too complex for us to address in two, three days. Therefore, let's actually agree on a common tactical text, which is very likely to happen, and that's not a bad thing again, but just to be uh, realistic about it. Or are we going to actually um, uh, sort of uh, look ourselves and understand gaps in our understanding, partly be primarily because, or, or maybe because, that our internet media worlds are not actually synchronizing at all? So that's kind of um, um, my take on the, the broader um, and the, the, the title and, and where I come from. But to, to talk about the new internet activism and the dawn of democracy, again, I find it very um, challenging to you know, kind of share my, my thinking on that because they are far, far more structural, highly um, you know, at, the, at the macro level. And when I'm talking from practices, um, Sundar mentioned about uh, uh, you know, frameworks for justice. And, and, and when I, when I, was, I, was, I began to wonder, yeah, that's fantastic. But then you put a practice in place. Let's talk about untouchability in this country. You have everything that's put in place. You have the constitution that says that's bad. You have people actually talking about it. Intellectuals have been banding about it. And what about practice? And you know that's, the, that's how you see the power of practice that can actually put everything into shame. So unless you have a particular understanding with the practice, you know, whatever frameworks that you build around, it's going to be quite vacuum. So, 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 so my question here is that it's going to do structures of the internet media worlds have inherent features to produce social justice discourses and movements. Now again, you know, I just like to start with um, two interesting um, um, points that have been bandied around in internet uh, rights-based debate. Uh, one is um, anonymity uh, versus the death of ephemeral, what I call ephemeral. Um, <clears throat> including academia, especially in my early 1990s, um, if you look at if you looked at um, uh, information um, technology or uh, uh, information society information network related scholarship, pretty much everyone bandied about the anonymity as the biggest thing that internet ever offered to all of us, and uh, many people made a huge career out of it. Um, and 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 if you if you if you go and ask them now, no, I never said that. And it's completely different. So it, it, it's now it's a death of ephemeral, lost loss of privacy. And the academia has moved on, so NGOs have moved on, and it, it's just within short 10 years, we just moved on, saying that internet is all about anonymity. And then I, I remember this famous joke, a cartoon, um, a, a dog and an old man chatting to each other and kind of pretty much, uh, you know, claiming them to be darlings and muscular blah 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 and we all laughed at it. Ah, oh, this is entirely possible. Now you think about it, it's not at all possible. Um, <clears throat> and then then you have another phenomenon, open society and closed society. And um, I'm, I don't want to talk too much about it because I take it everyone here, uh, the common understandings of open and closed society, or I be used in the common parlance. As we speak, uh, as we speak for open society, we, we also know more walls are being built day by day. But what, what do these actually mean in the internet mediated world? Are these technology driven? That's, maybe technology have opened up certain possibilities, but I would probably like to look at it. Um, this is what we do with the media. So this is what, how we progressed. It's the practice that has made from by actually looking at being anonymous because we were slightly concerned with the technology at the time, but now we're so open about it and we have no problem with it. It's a kind of a, the, the, evolu the evolution of pra human practices with the technology. So I don't think we should actually hurry ourselves and actually blame the technology. Oh my God, now technology is actually more open and it's uh, there lots of intuition, privacy, and yeah, they're, they're, that, those options are available. You can actually shut yourself down, but do you want to? So the practice that actually concerns much. Um, and then going, um, and the, re the reason I'm talking about this, it also actually, um, <clears throat> Um, uh, gratification, like Sundar mentioned, this, this particular platform also encourages gratifications. Um, you know, um, the humans by nature gain pleasures from such as things as expenditure, waste, festivities, sacrifices. So you just can't actually blame it on 
everything on technology. It's just the human practice itself, and it's actually embodied for a long time, and it has taken different expressions and modes when it comes to technology. So that's, that's the point that I'm trying to push to, for us to actually have a, a discussion. And when it comes to openness, I mean, if you trace the origin of openness, our open society, as, when, as was you know, used by Karl Popper, it was a clear sign to advocate for a neoliberal market. And he clearly said, you know, it's, it's all about minimizing bureaucracy of state, state bureaucracy, and um, arguing for markets to regulate themselves. And that's what open society, if you look, if you look at the, the, the origin of the discourse. And then you have open society as an international agency uh, founded by Soros, who is a very dear student of Karl Popper. And it has taken uh, multiple layers now. And, but, my, my, but my argument is that, you know, um, <coughs> It, when, when people talk so much about openness in, in the internet-mediated world, what do they actually mean? And my, my view is that it's more about, um, um, it's about technological standards and structures, openness. You, you have openness to access something. You have openness to actually access a particular content which has a com 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 commercial value to it. So it's very economical, but is it about, um, is it about openness in a just and fair manner? That's the key question. Um, so we, we know from that recent uh, Snowden episode, uh, <coughs> most of the international NGOs and development agencies and, and, and other NGOs, um, activists, went completely quiet. We heard the deafening silence. And no one actually should have uh, as, as thump, you know, thumping statement, this is wrong, what the US is doing wrong. I, I've been, especially, I've been following the Open Society, trying to know if they actually issued any statement. Yeah, they made a couple of, um, uh, their policy and advocacy uh, person uh, wrote a few blocks, but very uh, general block. The point I'm trying to say, where do we stand in terms of Open Society? What do we mean by open? So do th do, does this structure actually enable us to produce what we want to produce? That's a question I'd like to pose. And, and uh, I don't know the answer yet, but, um, so, you know, but anyway, I leave it there. But the second inherent feature, which is actually scaring me, which had been mentioned before, um, is the um, uh, consumerism um, in, the, in, in the net. And I don't want to go, um, um, I don't want to say too much about consumerism, uh, but it's worth remembering that um, it, it, it forms the basis it forms the basis for the internet-mediated world. I use the term cons consumerism or consumption, um, not just in the commercial value, but we consume everything. It's just that. We just consume. We, if you want to actually like a statement, you consume it. And how do you express it? You liked it. You put a like. You tag it. So you, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a notion of being consumeristic. And, and, and that is how it's being built. So you just consume, and, and, and many times, once you've consumed, you feel that your role has ended. So once you've liked it, <laughs> sorry, my <laughs> six. No, once you've consumed, um, you, see, you feel like your role has ended. You just liked it, and then you said, move on. Signed up the petition, move on. And so it's, 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 a, it's a consumption that actually, so it's an act of consumption that actually completes your action. So you don't do nothing much more than that. And, and, then, and, and that link to, link to the consumption is the political economy of the internet. So um, I, I'm not going to talk about the usual thing about the political economy of the internet, but how it numbs us in practices. That's what I'm most concerned with. Um, I, I'll just, you know, it's, you know, it's a very completely illusory, illusory situation, but um, I'm just making this up. I'm sure this is not far from truth. Um, probably on a practice level, it should not be surprising at all uh, that an English liberal left, a right-wing racist, a radical feminist, a conservative woman at home, an NGO worker, a homophobic patriarch, a priest, or a 13-year-old girl may all have received an email on shaping genitals and or a discount deal for a Caribbean cruising. More importantly, we just don't care. We are no longer upset by these inappropriate, unsolicited, and flamboyant emails, and we are perfectly okay with these corporate and perverted nuisance. We just press delete, move on. And this is the practice we are used to in the internet-mediated world, and we want to talk about social justice. So the point I'm trying to say, in other words, our political sensibilities are perpetually numbed in the internet-mediated world by consumption and entertainment. 
and you make you make obviously I I'm, 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 I can't wait to actually be defeated, but you will come up with lots of questions about oh we have this activism, uh, and uh, <clears throat> the last thing I would like to hear is that Egy internet is responsible for revolution in Egypt. Please don't ask me that question. Um, uh, uh, <clears throat> shoot me instead. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that you'll have lots and lots of um, 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 examples, microcosmic examples to say I'm wrong. Um, but the, the key point is that it is, we are defined by consumption. The, the actions in the internet-mediated world are de defined by consumption. That's what I'm trying to say. <coughs> and this, what I call, this is this everyday embrace of inequality, violence, and unjust. It's now a very casual part of the internet-mediated worlds. And that's very important. So we... We have no problem in accepting this everyday embrace of inequality, violence, and unjust. And how do we actually even tackle that? And then how are we going to talk about social justice? <clears throat> and then the next question I have when you talk about new activism, new dawn of democracy, do users and participants of the internet-mediated world provide enough circumstances to produce and promote social justice discourse? Um, do they? I think one thing that came straight to my mind, uh, whenever we talk about the internet-mediated worlds and its nature and character, um, the multiplicity of voices in it, and its diverse, diverse forms of uh, representation, uh, <clears throat> um, and, and the you know, voices, participation, and as a result of it, empowerment, democracy, you know, the whole baggage, right? Um, and they are, they are frequently used to articulate our presence or claim to claim our entitlements and counter ideologies we don't like or we detest. But the condition here though, all this must happen only in online spaces. If anything happens in offline spaces, it's, it's hardly recognized by online people. But the reverse does seem to happen. So uh, in one, in, 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 the, in, in the external, in, in the, broad, uh, the broader world, if something happens in that, I mean, I, I don't know about um, um, uh, magazines coming from um, this particular state, where I come from, Tamil Nadu, uh, <coughs> magazines these days actually dedicate uh, one or two pages on uh, what, what's sensational in Twitter this week. Um, of course, they're filling their pages, we know that. But the point is that there's some kind of a take, take coming from there. But what I'm, the point I'm trying to, although it may sound superficial, the point I'm trying to say, there's a lot of a transaction from online to offline. The reverse doesn't seem to happen much. So you have to, if you have to have voices, multiplication of views, diversity, you must stay online. And that's a condition. And that, to me, is very problematic. A, voices should be able to articulate wherever. Number two, most importantly, based on my fieldwork, I just began to notice, which is so embarrassing to admit, um, <coughs> um, that silence is a voice. And it's a, such a Western concept and it's very Foucauldian, you know, to say voices as confession. You just, it's a Catholicism. You just go and say, you confess, you voice, you, then you move on. That's it. But the point here is that what about those silences on this emerging industry? The, if you look at postal and communications industry when it started, they actually came to be rallied around uh, unions, trade unions. And it was a very powerful trade union. Whereas this is completely devoid of trade union culture, which actually goes back to my point, it's highly consumerist, capitalist, and entertainment oriented. Therefore, you talk about social justice, about a platform which is created, which is completely void of any unionism whatsoever, or even actually you know, labor, union, labor, th labor friendly thinking. So it's important to understand the structure itself actually lends you to act in a particular way um, which is actually pro-consumerist, pro-capitalist. That's just an another point for us to consider. Um, and lastly, <coughs> Um, this might be slightly, um, uh, having worked in the development sector for several years, um, I'm guilty of what I'm going to say. Um, <clears throat> mixing, up, mixing up of concepts. Um, that's another problem um, we, uh, I find it extremely, now that I've started working in, um, I'm doing research. Uh, for example, information society, network society, knowledge society, digital society, and then 
interchangeable uses, use of words like information, communication, knowledge. And that's another one, strand. So what, what, why, why do, what do we mean by these interchangeable use of terms? Bec to me, all this refer to, we don't have a, probably we don't have a, um, of course one may have a, a distinctive theory or what, whatever, but my view coming from practice approach, all this mean is different way of actually um, are locating structures for consum consumption patterns. So therefore, these concepts at, at some point are slightly challenging for me to locate social justice because the structure itself predominantly consumeristic and entertainment oriented, therefore capitalistic. Um, <coughs> so, I mean, and the last bit is that um, if we're going to talk about social justice in the internet mediated world, um, are we going to talk about issues that are actually informed by us in the internet mediated world by fellow users? Or are we going to actually look at what's happening in the broader world we live in. Um, so that to me, it's an interesting question because <clears throat> social justice uh, is, a, is a huge, you know, it's, it's, it's got a long history to it. And in, in India, you can't talk about social justice without talking about Dalits and women. And um, what, what would the internet mediated world is likely to contribute to, um, to, to tackle those problems? Um, and um, um, who, who will represent them? As Sundar said, this is a lived, you know, Dalit history or women's, uh, you know, uh, violence on women, it's a lived in experience. And by liking it, will I become part of the movement? Or by signing up the petition, will I become part of the movement? And I highly doubt that. <clears throat> so I'm not providing much answers here, but my, 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 my view is that social justice in the internet mediated world um, is something that's very challenging because the structure itself is not actually prone to what we like, what we want to think. And the, um, the, the internet mediated world um, is, 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 is still actually um, largely borrowed by constructs, um, not, from, not, not by us, but for by the rest. And, and, and I, I may sound a bit cynical and skeptic, but uh, this is where I like to end. Thanks.